Welcome guys to the start of a new series for the channel and one that will probably run differently from all my others. A let's play of course live commentated here of Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright the trilogy of course starting with the first game the original and best. Well I always like the original one the, one the one that really introduces you to something if it gets you hooked enough you will buy the sequels and man there has been many Ace Attorney sequels there's been spin-offs there's been Apollo Justices, there's been Miles Edgeworth games, and to be honest, I've got a fair few of them myself. I very much enjoy them. There's not much chance for people outside of Japan to kind of have these visual novel games or give them a go, but Phoenix Wright has managed to, well, come across very well to a Western audience. So with that said, we're going to start a Let's Play of it. Now, this is more of a story type game, so it's more me reading you a story. We'll have to work out truths, work out lies, contradictions and statements and all that jazz as we go forward. But as I click on All Rise and we see ourselves the three games we have on offer in the trilogy collection here, Trials and Tribulations, we got Justice for All, and of course the original one, including being able to play it in their Japanese version, and the English, which we are going to play it in. We'll click on a new game because unless speaking more action as we get on with what is most likely to be the tutorial chapter. So, easy mode, probably? Well, let's enjoy as we set ourselves up for a series. A series indeed. New game! As we reach episode one, the first turnabout. Let's see what the case is about. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! I, I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. So we come to August 3rd, 9.47 in the morning, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2 to start our adventure. As a lawyer. Boy, am I nervous. More to the point of defense attorney. Right. Oh, uh, uh, hiya, Chief. Phew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favour. A favour? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Nah, oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one, except it's a murder trial, which doesn't seem that simple to me. Young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the Butts. 
In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That's and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do! Okay, August 3rd, we moved on a little bit time-wise to District Court, courtroom number 2. This court is now in session! And time to put on the old man voice. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, hands shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case, which would of course be Mr. Phoenix Wright. No, it's Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Dad, I read the case report cover to cover so many times, I think he's hinting at us here. It's... Wait. Uh-oh! No! No way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? The victim? Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, uh, um, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just touch the court record button to check it at any time, okay? Well, maybe we should. Right then, the court record comes up and we've got ourselves the attorney's badge and the Cindy's autopsy report. Which I think instantly tells us our victim's name, but we got the attorney's badge here. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Okay then, I'm pretty sure that could be easily forged, but still. And then moving on, we got Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death was, oh, American date structure, so it's 31st of the 7th in mine, so 31st of July is that? 4pm to 5pm. Somewhere between that time frame. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Okay then. So we learnt a lot there, and it's Cindy we're looking for as the name. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Well, it's not Mia Fey. It's not Cinder Block. It's Cindy Stone, but I see where you're going with that one. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? Well, we learnt that one as well. She died because she was... Poisoned, hit with a blunt object, or strangled. Well, we know that. Also, from the uh, flashback we saw at the start to set the scene. She was struck once by a blunt object. Only once? Ooh, that must have been a big strike. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Okay, the statue is added to the court record. We have ourselves more evidence. It's the weapon. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Touch the court record button to check the court record frequently. She wants to check this, do you? Right then. We find a statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. A weapon submitted as evidence by Prosecutor Payne. Nice name. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls a defendant, Mr. Bass, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? 
Pay attention. Don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready! Let's just hope he doesn't say anything. Unfortunate. Indeed, he probably will. Uh-oh. Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Here he goes with another deaf and despair diatribe. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Antony! Um... Didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. Was it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Okay then, so passport has been added to the court record. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Yeah, I can see how this goes bad. Should I? Uh, we should stop him from answering, probably. Wait and see what happens is the other choice as well. Stop him from answering would probably be good. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Uh, seems he didn't like that. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, he's not really helping. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Oh. Well, did you or did you not? Huh? <laughs> well, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Uh oh, he went. What do I do? Right, uh, at this point in time, stop him answering doesn't really seem to be working very well. Have him answer honestly probably isn't a bad idea, but while we're here, maybe we should check the court record and check out the passport. So we got the victim apparently arrived home from Paris on the 30th of July. Well, look at the day before the murder. It is July, isn't it? I'm really bad with dates. But apart from that, we got all that kind of stuff. So we're getting ourselves a little bit of information here, but we'll have him answer... Honestly, I think, here. Yeah. I know! I'll send him a signal! Tell. The. Truth! Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying and he's got a high voice after all, so I've been... Giving him a quite stereotypically good voice then. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court. Mr. Payne. The prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, we, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Oh, I see the pun in the name there. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit. 
You may proceed for your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay, and our first witness testimony comes to light. Pay attention, everyone. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Well, that's, that's, that's a conjecture at the end, but still. Hmm. And I hope you guys saw the quite blaring contradiction there. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the victim in the vic- Well, the phone in the victim's apartment weren't- Why wasn't the victim working? Yeah, the phone in the victim's apartment working. Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawyer used was one of those. Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Okay, so we've got a blackout record as well added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, Wright, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Touch the court record button and point out contradictions in the testimony. Right, the cross-examination begins. So, I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. Well, this is just what anything could be doing, but we get the option here to press a statement, which allows us to get more and more info. So if we say, hold it! It doesn't work, but if we say, hold it, it works. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Uh, uh, I don't know. He just seems strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad, and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. Well, that's just, uh, that's just conjecture. That's, that's rubbish, you can't say that. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Exactly. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looks suspicious. So, what happened next? Everyone's seen enough courtroom dramas to know these words. Maybe. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. So keep pressing the statements, get more info. Hold it! It doesn't like me, does it? Hold it. No, it doesn't like me. Well, we can also do it by pressing the press button. Half open, you say? Yes, yes. The door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd in a big city like this, I thought. I see. And what happened next? Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Hold it! So keep pressing, keep learning more. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? See, the thing is, you kind of... That is really human. We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Hmm. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there. A woman, not moving. Dead. Well, to be honest, you start off with, you'd be questioning if she's dead or not. Hold it. Unless you actually went and tested. 
Are you sure she was dead? She could have been lying in ketchup. W well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? I quelled in fright and found myself unable to go inside. Hold it! So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes. I mean, no, nothing! Okay, what happened next? I thought to call the police immediately, did you now? You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Obviously you did. Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony, because we know, like, you thought to call the police, what happened next? So we didn't get any extra information there. However, the phone in the apartment wasn't working. Now, this is contradicting something before, because he said that he didn't step inside, didn't he? The phone in her apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, no it wasn't. Right! But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh that? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Next, he went to a nearby park and found a public phone, which we kind of know about and probably don't need the information of so much. But if we move forward, this is the glaring contradiction in statement here. This is the one. I remember the time exactly. It was 1pm. Now, what do we have that says other things from that? Well, if we check this here, we see the time of death was between 4pm and 5pm. Meaning that he couldn't have seen someone who died you know, in the future. So with that said, we look to present this statement and see how we can get the witness here on the ropes. The witness that we know is very much tied to the crime. Indeed, but for now, I bid you farewell for this episode and say, well, we're gonna be doing this on episodic nature. We might be doing chapters and then having breaks and doing other chapters in between other Let's Plays, but I hope you enjoy and I hope you join me for more Phoenix Wright in the future. Please like and share around if you're a Phoenix Wright fan or a fan of the channel as a whole as we get going with a new, brilliant Nintendo franchise series from Capcom and I'll see you around for more in the future. Well, more to the point, more tomorrow. Bye-bye.